the new minecart mechanics make it easy to build a certain kind of computer in Minecraft now. This is a two tag system. The basic idea is that you have a first in first out memory stack, which, you know, we can pretty easily create just using a literal stack of um, chest minecarts. And each one of these contains uh, different data values, so either red, green, or blue concrete. And so this little processing unit here can take in a couple minecarts. Um, this minecart deconstructor is just from El Mango's tutorial. And just based on what data values are inside those minecarts, it uh, spits out new minecarts of certain colors, and <laughs> those fly up to the top and get dropped back on top of the stack to be read at a later point. These types of computers were originally thought of in the 40s, actually, so it's a pretty old design. And they're called tag systems because um, as the program runs, the stack gets higher or lower, maybe, and the processor is almost kind of playing a game of catch up to get to the end of it. And so um, the people who first kind of wrote about it thought of the processors like a kid playing tag, trying to catch back up to the end of the stack. The interesting thing about these types of computers is that they're actually Turing complete. Uh, so as simple as it seems, you can come up with programs uh, with two tag systems that can compute anything that a normal computer can. You know, they'll be slow as heck and have a horribly massive memory stack, but um, in theory, they can do anything a normal computer can. An example might be a good idea here. If you look up tag systems online, you'll see that they're all actually prefixed by a number. So they're called two tag systems, three tag systems, four tag systems, whatever. This is a two tag system. And what that number refers to is how many uh, memory values you read at a time. So for us, the way we run the program is we read two memory values at a time. The second one we throw out. The first one is the only one we use to actually add more memory values back to our stack. So for this program, we're going to just make some substitutions based on that first memory value we read out. So if it's red, we add a green and blue to the stack. If it's green, we add red. If it's blue, we add three reds. So first example, we read a red, we toss out a red, and then add a green and a blue for the first red. Then here, we have a red and green, so we toss out the green. We read the red, and then we add another green and blue back to the stack. So we have blue, green, blue. And then same thing, read the blue, toss the green, add three reds to the stack. And uh, this continues, and eventually you get down to just a single value in the memory stack, and then you're done. Some tag systems have uh, colors that actually just mean stop. So like in one program, you know, when you read a blue, the machine might just stop running regardless of how many values are still left in the stack. So this is actually a program to uh, work on a math problem. So uh, there's a problem called the Colatz conjecture, and um, this program computes Colatz sequences. So uh, the problem to understand is actually just you know pretty basic arithmetic. Um, what's funny is we actually have no idea how to solve it. But you take a number. If it's odd, you triple it and add one. And if it's even, you cut it in half. So three, triple it, add one, we get 10. 10 cut in half, we get 5. 5 triple it, add 1, we get 16. And uh, you keep going, and eventually you get 1. And at this point, you're actually done. Because, well, if you triple and add 1, you're just back at 4. And, you know, so the whole thing just repeats at that point in a loop. So um, the Colatz conjecture is just, you know, mathematicians wonder if every number, every positive number, eventually reaches 1. Uh, this program doesn't, you know, solve the Colatz conjecture, but it can actually compute this sequence of numbers. So here's the same um, pattern, but just applied to the number seven instead of three. And so here you see, we start with three red blocks and that's not a coincidence. Um, the machine actually for odd numbers computes two steps at a time. So uh, three goes to 10, 10 cut it in half, and we get five, so five red blocks in a row. And then same thing, we triple five, Add 1, 16, cut it in half, and then we get 8. And so here's 8 red blocks in a row. And then uh, even numbers, it just, you know, proceeds normally. So 8 to 4 to 2 and to 1. And so this program right here tells you if you are playing the Colatz game and you start with the number 3, you, you'll eventually get back down to 1. Obviously not terribly useful, but just a demonstration that these things can actually 
run programs. And while we were talking about that, this thing has actually been computing the Colat sequence for the number seven. So there we did three as the example, and um, you can see seven's about twice as long. And this thing started with seven red concrete powder minecarts in the stack. And so if we speed this thing up, we'll put it on 10 times speed, um, it should get back down to just one red minecart. Uh, the minecarts look like they're not even in the bubble column at this point. Um, they're still traveling all the way up and over. This is just a graphical glitch uh, when speeding up the game. Yep. Almost there. And there we go. Just one left, and sure enough, yep, right inside. With that all said, uh, we can understand a lot better how this thing is actually working and uh, what all the different parts in it are doing. So I have some little buttons down there that I can set up the uh, starting sequence with and a lock uh, right here so I can keep it from auto-starting. If I turn this off, give a flick. I accidentally broke the tripwire. There we go. So there's five basic parts to this kind of computer. Uh, the first one you just saw is the minecart deconstructor. Uh, we're using a clever trick here though which is that um, when we push the minecarts, because they're at different heights, the bottom one snaps to this lower rail, while the upper one uh, moves a little further and snaps to this rail. Um, so as a result, it's an easy way to get... Um, oh, I just broke it. It's an easy way uh, to get two minecarts from the same stack into uh, different locations. The second part is the sensor. So uh, once the minecarts are destroyed, the minecarts drop into these chests, um, but the items go through a sorter, and uh, at the very end here is where a signal goes through. So right there, um, a minecart with a blue concrete went through the system as the, uh, the first minecart. So the upper one, you know, has a sorter too, but um, it doesn't like signal anything else. It just sorts the item, drops it back down uh, into the refiller under here and nothing more. On this side though, um, we have the third part, which is the program. We have three rail lines here that control the minecart dispensers down below, and then three lines on top from the various colors that can go through the system. So here we have a green going through and well, uh, you remember the rules down there. So red, for instance, um, should dispense a green and blue minecart. And so sure enough, if we look at this first line here, um, just have some observer wires powering the green line and then the blue line. Similarly, uh, we want green blocks to make um, a single red minecart. So when a green concrete block goes through, uh, which is, you know, the middle line here, it'll send a signal into the red line. And then when a blue block goes through, um, it'll send three signals into the uh, red line. And that's why these uh, repeaters are on max delays to give enough spacing to those signals um, for the minecarts to safely all travel without interfering with each other. The fourth part is, you know, the minecart dispenser down here. So it's pretty basic. We just have all the chest minecarts in here, the various colors um, in hoppers. And as the minecarts travel underneath, oh, is it done? I'll just send another minecart along so you can watch. Yep, those minecarts will get loaded up with um, one or two items. Every now and then, a minecart will only get one item, uh, which is why we're dispensing two in the first place to make sure they at least get one. Um, I tried debugging it for like an hour and couldn't figure it out, so I just settled for the uh, lazy, ignorant option. And then a basic bubble column uh, to bring the minecarts back up on top of the stack. The last part is this timing circuit. Um, so it's essentially just a big AND gate uh, because we only want this machine to try to read from memory if two conditions are filled. Uh, obviously we can you know, read from memory manually, but we need there to be at least two minecarts here. So that's what this um, AND gate is detecting. But we also need the previous uh, round of minecart creation to be finished. And so that's what this system here is. There's a little uh, lock right here. And then once both of those are true, uh, the system will be able to send a pulse back into the slime block here. So now I have the game set to 25 times speed because this thing is really funny to watch. It looks like the minecarts are almost like flying up into the stack on their own. 
All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time.